pull up my screen here for a deck that we're going to go through just to kind of talk through three ways that class is redesigning virtual learning, uh, which is kind of a hot topic, right? Um, as everyone has done their shift here to the new to the new virtual world. So let me pull up my screen here for everyone to see desktop and we will present. Okay, so the three ways we're going to talk through kind of, I mean, there's a lot of ways, but there's three that we're going to focus at a high level and we'll go through a breakdown of that. So before we do this, just want to do a quick introduction uh, for myself. So we just met Emma here, who's going to help keep me honest and keep us on, on time today and make sure that we cover everything we're supposed to cover and kind of field any, any interactions and questions that we have as we come through. So I'm Chris Olson. I'm here that to cover the uh, strategic advisors class to cover kind of some of the strategy and innovation that we've kind of done and redesigned for learning for our platform and try to solve for those problems. So we're going to go through like kind of a timeline of the corporate learning environment and how the shift has has moved from from the in person incorporating web conference tools and just the different learning technologies that exist today and kind of how we we all tap into all those different kind of facets and, and what where our place is in that ecosystem. So then we're going to go through, based off of all that research uh, and just kind of what's happening in the market, kind of how we positioned class and in, in what it does with our platform. And uh, we'll end it here with Q&A as well, too. We'll have a little bit of uh, kind of teasers of coming coming soon features that we're going to have uh, on our platform and some new additions because we are pretty new here and we're constantly innovating. So we're going to be doing a lot, of, um, a lot more additions here to the platform, even for some of the stuff we covered today. But uh, please feel free to interject with questions throughout, and um, Emma will do a good job of kind of keeping me apprised of everything as it comes through. So again, I'm Chris Olson, I'll be the one leading us through the conversation today. But where we really want to start here is kind of starting with the landscape of the learning technology, especially for corporate learning. So right now there's kind of some tough choices, as you probably have all sort of experienced here. First is that we have in-person, which is kind of you know, traditionally been viewed as the best. Um, and I'm not going to debate that, but what we are going to say is like, there is no perfect and right way. So with in-person, there are some clear benefits that you have where you can really focus on doing this interactively um, and why we are going to be actually covering some of like the, pre the ways you can practice, how you can um, leverage things and make sure it's context rich and you have deep, meaningful, impactful connections uh, because you're 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 kind of close together, and so you have the camaraderie of the whole environment whenever it's whenever it's together. So the challenges that you run into is that it's really difficult to keep it to scale, to grow, to to be able to make sure that it's accessible to everybody. You have scheduling conflicts, and so it's really hard to make uh, changes and pivots, um, and to get everybody together in person. You know the the travel costs, as I think we've all seen um, with the with the shift to to virtual and remote. So. The, with the logistics, it just becomes really difficult to maintain and manage all that. So, so it's it's really great, provides a great experience, right, um, for knowledge transfer and for people to be engaged and interactive. But there are some some drawbacks, some areas where technology can help support. So then enter in web conference. So we're leveraging web conference tools where there are some added advantages, and a lot of organizations were forced kind of into that, kind of didn't really have much of a choice. Uh, when when there was the big shift. And so what we have here is now there's ability to have scale where you can hit um, larger audiences very easily with you know a few clicks of your mouse, whether it's Zoom, Teams, or WebEx. Um, it's really easy and accessible for people to get on there. The other added benefit with tech is that you get attendance tracking and you get data insights. All this automated kind of uh, like, like data that, that gets um, aggregated and it's easily trackable thanks to the automation that technology provides. However, the drawbacks there are that the, there's low engagement because you're not having the, the, the meaningful interactions that you traditionally are used to with in person. You have the constant distractions of, of what's in front of you because you're staring at your computer screen. It's very easily to have other things pop up and interfere. Um, Outlook, you know, constantly or whatever your email of choice is, um, that's kind of constantly kind of kind of disrupt your experience when you're, you're getting pinged from all these different different avenues. And the way you deliver the content and have the ability to to provide um, opportunities for practice and interactivity are just kind of you know they didn't go away, but it's it's definitely limited. And and you had to um, you know a lot of people had to repurpose and revisit kind of how that's delivered. So those are the kinds of goods and bads. And so really there's not, you know, what we try to do here at class is kind of take 
all of the good and, and focus on that to make sure that we can provide the best of both worlds here. So what we're doing is we're taking the benefits that you experience with in-person and then all the benefits that web conference tools provide and provide that in one stop platform here for you to leverage for your live virtual learning um, component here. So <clears throat> some of the challenges that we've seen and what kind of led us to this is that there's three stakeholders. And we're gonna start with the obvious one, which is the most important one, which is the learner experience. So often what we've heard uh, from all from the market and from our clientele is going to be that we are hearing a lot of um, learners that lose the instructor camera and see of faces. Uh, it's very easy to get distracted as I kind of uh, alluded to earlier. And that, you know, oftentimes when you're trying to bring in some of those practice opportunities, you're gonna to have to click on on uh, the uh, on something in chat that's going to take you outside of the platform that you're using. So it'd be nice to have something all in one place. So that's the learner experience uh, that that we focus on. The other stakeholder. Oh, I got a poll that came in in front of my chat here. So let me get that out of the way. Is the instructor experience, and so that's clearly people that are you know those that are facilitating. Those are the kind of commanding the the flow. Uh, they're really the ones responsible for making sure that the the transfer of knowledge is taking place, as well as ensuring that there's group activity and interaction and engagement taking place. And so having the shift to digital really disrupted kind of what that experience was like. It didn't go away, but however, it was something where everyone had to relearn and and kind of come up with workarounds for how to find a way to really engage your audience of your participants. So a lot of those uh, kind of issues that we heard from them are having to bring in all these different platforms to do all of the different things. And it's really hard to, uh, to have to bring things in to do polling, whether you're using Kahoot or Poll Everywhere, and then tapping that into Zoom and how to do quizzes and, and gather polls and do it in real time instead of having to do things pre-prepared and being able to do it in the flow of conversation. So a lot of those different different things are just kind of it's not that it didn't happen, but it just the experience wasn't very seamless. Um, and then being able to measure engagement, because when you're in person, you have the ability to get a good read of the room to be able to know and, and get facial reactions, even body language. And so and you could do that, you know, when you're able to see it just by you know moving your head around. But when you're doing it on a sea of screens, um, of a sea of screens that you'd see, and some maybe cameras are turned off, some are, are not on. And so it becomes a little bit hard to kind of get a good read of the room. So the one that usually gets overlooked oftentimes is the is alert your admin experience. So you know, your learning technology admins are really doing a lot of work behind the scenes. And there's a lot that they are responsible for, and so you know, I we really try to highlight them to bring them into into the um, into the opportunity here because they really play a major role in the experience in, in all of this. And so, especially for large organizations, to make sure like that that you have accurate data of tracking um, and being able to to make sure that you are uh, getting the content to where they need it and make sure group enrollments are correct and the scheduling and all of that, there's so much that goes, goes on behind the scenes. And they really take a lot of the burden on that for a larger group, but, but they just kind of don't get the credit because they're not really in front of the classroom doing the facilitation. So these are the three key stakeholders that we focus on to make sure that we provide a great experience for, for class. And so <clears throat> just to call out the different training methods and how they're used today, here's a quick graph uh, that we provide from Statistia, which provides global statistics of how the training methods are used in the market today. And so right now, what we have here is we have the different methods of what kind of training is taking place. And then we have the, the methods and how they're used. So as you can see on the, on the left-hand side of the color chart graph here, no online is what's in gray. You can see how small that is compared to everything else. Basically to the right, there is at least some elements in the orange that are online. And then you're getting to a, a more, more kind of healthy balance of online to mostly online to all online. So either way, you can see digital is really taking place here. And this was in mid 2020. So this means that as this report came out, it's really was actually pre uh, pre pandemic before there was the big shifts to virtual and digital. And as everyone was kind of making those shifts. So, and you can see a clear one here for mandatory compliance training. That's gonna be because obviously that, that training that you has to be done completed and tracked, that's, that's usually where it takes place. But everything else here, even those uh, for leadership development, executive development, um, interpersonal skills, things that are traditional human skills, even that's starting to shift to become more online. 
So what are the technologies to be online? You know, that that is something where we have a breakdown of the different uh, capabilities and delivery methods that we have. And so this is coming from the uh, 20 uh, from the uh, training industry report from the training magazine. And so this was uh, provided in 2020. And so here what they're showing is all of those different methods and how uh, how how learning is being delivered online. And so you can see that there's two that really stand out. And that's going to be your traditional learning management systems. That's again going to be kind of a lot of your compliance, making sure that that the mandatory training is being completed for all those required sessions. And then we have the virtual webcasting, uh, video broadcasting. So that's where your virtual classrooms and um, really it's it's going to probably be typically either Zoom, GoToMeeting, um, you know, the uh, uh, Teams, all that. <clears throat> that's where that's coming into play. And so with those, those are the two major ones. I think what we're going to see is. There's a little bit of uh, coming back as you look at some of some at the bottom, virtual reality, augmented reality, AI. That's going to start getting there, but you can see that it's it's early. Like there's there's still it's just not cost effective right now. So some more things will come out and uh, soon enough. But really, the areas of focus are going to be these two, and really the webcasting has gone up majorly. Um, obviously, with a uh, shift to more remote, hybrid um, uh, working situations. So. That's where we come in. We came in to solve for those problems of the virtual instructor led. And so one of the things that I want to call out before we before we kind of go further is I want to pull in the poll results here to kind of share. So uh, Emma, is everyone, are you able to see the screen as I share that for the poll? Well, either way, I'll just call out some of the results in, in case. Oh, here Hello, we go. now can you see it? Yeah, perfect. I just want to share those results real quick. So thanks so much. So as you can see here, low engagement is the top one. So that's 50% of everyone responded with that. Constant distractions, I didn't realize this was gonna be as large, but that seems to be the second uh, runner up here. Um, content limitations, um, yep, lots of great, lots of great responses here, which so it sounds reminiscent. So inability to integrate with, with learning management systems, yep. So as you can see that there, there are these challenges that we're trying to solve for here with class. And so that's basically the, the purpose for why we're here. So just wanted to call this out to kind of share some of the things that we're trying to focus on. And we'll go through the, the three ways at a high level of how we're, how we're addressing, these, um, addressing these areas of concern. So I'll stop sharing that, close that, get out of the way. So one of the first ways that we're doing that is restoring human connection and collaboration. And so this is a big focus point for us. And the reason being is that we are really wanted to, to reintroduce that human experience because we're people. And when you're working with a synchronous session versus your typical asynchronous, where you're doing self-paced courses, you know, it's all about that human connection and interactivity. Uh, breakout rooms, right? That is going to be like where most of the magic happens. And so we're going to go through a little bit of class and, and show you in a live kind of, kind of live, a, a demo environment here for you to understand kind of what that experience looks like. And so, but we really want to make it hovered around a human-centered design outlook here for how we how we um, provide the class experience. So I'm going to jump out of here, and we're going to go into class itself. And so it's going to be a little bit meta here as we're doing Inception, like where we are going to be in the class environment. And so let me pull this over here. Zoom toolbar is right in the way of where I need to get at for some of my components here. There we go. So this is class. Welcome to class. This is our, our layout and platform, which is a separate app from Zoom, but we are heavily partnered with them. We actually use Zoom's technology, which is the best in class technology for architecture, for video and audio uh, clarity on their codec. And so we chose to partner with them specifically because of their, their ability to provide large scale um, human interaction and, and uh, collaboration. So we're going to kind of go through how we tackle that and, and how it's designed in that way. But as you can see, it's going to be a, a native look and feel to Zoom itself. So the digital adoption is really quite quick. Um, and one other thing to call it is we're looking at this from the instructor experience. And so that means that there's going to be a few things that you're going to see here that the students would not see. But we're going to dive into uh, the student view, at least on the iPad version, because we're mobile enabled, and we're going to uh, kind of give you a little bit of a look and feel of what the student um, experience is going to be like. But really, everything is the same with just a with a few exceptions that I'll call out as we go through this. But 
as you can see, one thing to call out is that look at this. We got a lot going on. There's a lot of video taking place. So this can be overwhelming at some, but the, the great news is, is that we leverage data in real time to support the instructor to be able to kind of address some of these issues. So um, a couple of things that I'll call out is the layout is all obviously different as well. And so what we did is we want to solve for the problem of who the heck is talking. Um, when the instructor is is uh, you know going to be driving a lot of the conversation during the facilitation, you know you don't want that to get lost in in the in the view or if you have the speaker view where someone coughs or maybe there's large loud typing and that can take over who you're looking at because of the the um, the sound coming in through the microphones. So what we decided to do is we always want to have whoever the instructor is to be pinned in the top left, which is where I'm sitting. We call this the podium. So being up here, I can be able to uh, express myself and share and, and kind of facilitate, uh, but also I can shift and, and provide anyone who might be say in the what we call the front of class, where we have Kayla, Justine and, and Tamara here to be able to become the facilitator as well, because this is all maneuverable in real time. So I could take Kayla here and move her to the podium. And now she has the floor and ever can focus on what she has to share. So you can have your subject matter experts panelists or, or um, co-host to be placed up here at the at the front of class. So that's kind of just the idea there for your larger sessions to be able to elevate those. The fun thing is for your body of the class down here for all your classmates, as we like to call them, you can actually take them and, and you can provide them the ability to be elevated to the front of class if maybe there's a success story or something anecdotal that they want to share uh, to support whatever is being discussed. You can always elevate them to be at the top to, to have a, a moment to speak and present as well. You also have the ability to kind of identify those for uh, who are going to be presenters. And we also have some additional camera views that we're going to tackle over here, which have uh, some unique abilities with those camera views. Additionally, over to the left, you see here we've got the participant list uh, provided, and this is as a default. So you can see everyone who is involved in the class and attending, and it's broken down based off of the uh, in, in grouping. So you kind of know who is in what role. So you kind of know who to listen to, who to participate with, and uh, the instructor will also be able to see who the absent ones. So who are the no shows? So you have information around like everyone at whim for, for where everybody is at. And one of the new features that we have coming out is the ability to do searches. So for the larger sessions that you have, uh, maybe for like your, your webinar scale sized uh, events, you'll be able to search based by name to be able to kind of see, see everybody in that environment to see where they're at. So a couple of things that we want to call out for the instructor that are specific to, to the instructor, not for the learner, is that you'll see we got two columns here. One is going to be the verification column. And so this lets us know to have an extra layer of protection for anyone uh, that is joining your session to make sure that there's that they are supposed to be there. And if they're not, then what we do is we block their view. So for Ms. Julia and Elsa here, they would both only see gray silhouettes in those videos. They wouldn't be able to see anybody else um, because it's going to block them until we know who they are. So if their name and email addresses are not aligned, uh, then they're not going to be able to participate until the instructor allows them to allows them in. Um, spoiler alert, we have a unique way of de delivering content as well. And that is also in the teaching tools that is also going to be blocked uh, from them to be able to access. So it's going to protect your proprietary information and intellectual property. So with all that, what we would do if, if that was a case where we, they are supposed to be who uh, entering into the room, then we can just kind of change that by verifying the user and just create a profile if they're new or an existing uh, learner to provide them an uh, admittance into the room. The other column over here that's reserved for the instructor is the focus tracker. And so this is the thing kind of uh, where the instructor could have a little bit more information to understand kind of who and and uh, and who who all is supposed who's all engaged in here and who isn't. So we got a couple of things. One, there's a real time indicator for those who are speaking. And we also have the ability for this pair of eyeballs to kind of know who's actually in the class app, because we talked about the constant distractions. Well, let's say I got distracted by wanting to go into uh, Chrome here to go to my, my, my deck here that I'm presenting with everybody. And you'll notice a pair of eyeballs is going to pop up right there. As soon as I click back into the app, those go away. So it acts as an informational tool for the instructor to know in real time 
where everybody is at. Because if if you have a whole column here of, of uh, eyeballs showing, then it's probably not a good sign. And so that could be an opportunity to try to re-engage everybody to come back into class. So it's it's there to, to just be another kind of point of reference for the instructor to have to, to know where everybody's at. So <clears throat> something we'll get into a little bit later is a class management tab. And that's something also reserved for the instructor, but that'll be later when we get to the kind of data and analytics. Uh, but other than that, everything else for the uh, experience and view for the learner is going to be roughly the same. Um, they're going to be able to in personalize the experience by the number of uh, video screens that they want. So if you want to reduce this because it's just sensory overload, you can totally do that. But if you want to have the max view of, of everyone to kind of see a wide array, um, the, the learners are empowered to do so. But before we get into some of the other views here, I want to call out the these specific cameras that we have right here. So the reason we have these, uh, we, they're, they're identified for, for their uh, specific purposes, but there's really a lot of options you have to come along with this. So first off, the class camera, this is going to be intended for those that are gathered in a physical space. So whether it's a training room or a conference room, this is going to be something where they have the ability to go ahead and, and kind of connect uh, at, in unison, but still be participating. So. Uh, for instance, if you're leveraging Zoom rooms, there's a Zoom room uh, connector that everyone can let or controller that everyone can leverage and be represented in that group environment. So additionally, we have the, um, the instructor camera. And so that camera view is going to be something specific for anything that you want to display physically. So to go with the class theme, of course, we've got a, a chalkboard there, right, as if you're in the classroom, um, but, you know, it could be your whiteboards. Uh, if you want to go more old school and study leveraging the online whiteboards, uh, but that this this really has all kinds of uh, all, all kinds of options. Because if you think about it, if you're a music teacher, you could show someone where to put your fingers on the piano keys. Um, if you are doing something even in the manufacturing industry where you want to walk through how to take apart something physically and replace a valve on, 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 a, on a, you know, soda dispenser machine. If you're kind of, if you have someone out in the field that's kind of repairing those, like uh, anything, any remote location that you want to guide something through that, you can share that in real time. And then, of course, we have the sign language camera for your large sessions for those that are hearing impaired to make sure that everyone is uh, being provided for. So. But the instructor cam, one thing I want to call out for this is, as I mentioned, kind of the different ways that you can physically display and share things is that you can pin that underneath the instructor. And so the nice thing about this is not only do you have the person who is kind of speaking and walking you through whatever it is that's being shared physically, but you can actually see uh, that view underneath them in real time talking you through that. So you see both things pinned to the, pinned to the class for everyone to be able to focus on. And let's say you want an up and close uh, personal view of this, we can take that and pin it to the class. So that way everyone can kind of see up close and personal, whatever it is that we really want to highlight to make sure that they're able to, to kind of physically see and be aware of as they're being walked through, um, through those options. So I'll unpin that, there we go. Okay, so uh, now some of the other things that we want to walk through are the different views that you have that, uh, that the instructor can leverage. Now, this is kind of cheating a little bit into the data uh, spot, but when you have all those attendees that you're trying to support and, and cover, it's going to help to have these different views that we provide that will change things instantaneously for you. So we've got the alphabetical um, arrangement here, which is first name, last name, pretty straightforward, self-explanatory. Then we start getting into the hand raised option where, you know, you could say, well, Chris, I mean, yeah, we've got the hand raised option right on the video screen. So I can see Vanessa and Gia have done that. What's big about this? Well, when we leverage that, what happens is it will arrange that in, in, in sequential order. So I know it was first Vanessa that raised her hand and then Gia, then Jimmy, then Judy, and so on and so forth. So left to right, we present it to, for you to know who has raised their hand in that order. So one, you don't have to use the mental effort. And two, you don't have, you're not gonna have any unconscious bias potentially come in to call upon someone when you're just kind of doing it at random. So this is gonna allow you to do it based off of the order in first come first serve. Now we also have the ability for interactions and, and reactions. So it, oftentimes if you have all, for your larger audiences and maybe the screens aren't on, maybe you want to get a, a little bit of feedback from the, from the group and maybe you want to provide ways for everyone to kind of celebrate, 
we have the ability for um, everyone to share with nonverbal feedback. So everyone can either share these celebrations where we clearly identify the different ways that everyone can kind of communicate with each other for everyone in the class to see. And then we also have the ability for um, getting the feedback when an instructor might want to get a quick barometer, a quick read of the room in a digital way. So they can say, hey, how's everyone doing? Is anyone everyone on the same page? Is anyone getting stuck? And then you can have a yes, no, maybe so response there. And then uh, maybe you're trying to you know, look at the area of focus and conversation and, and what you're covering and uh, you want to provide opportunities. So, hey guys, we're, what do you think about doing this next? You know, Give me a thumbs up, thumbs down. Um, or the pace of this, am I going too fast or too slow? You can actually get those quick indicators. So Nick can tell me like, yeah, Chris, you're going pretty slow. Let's, let's go ahead and speed it up. So those are kind of a couple of the, the different ways that we can do that. And one of the most popular one we hear is like, need a break. All right, uh, we've been on a while. Chris, you rambled on too long. And so they can indicate that to kind of uh, give a flag and we can arrange that, that view to kind of know um, what everyone's sharing with me in real time. Now, my personal favorite is going to be the participation view. And so what this does is this lets me know who is actually um, participating in real time. So we have an algorithm that is going to be running in the background, letting you know, measuring three things. One is going to be the microphone talk time. And then we're also going to have the chats, which we have an enhanced uh, chat capabilities here, much more like an iMessage so, or, or you know, any kind of text message service. So you can actually click on the name and you can see the number of chats for each individual as they're coming in. So pretty handy there. And so, so we're gonna measure those two things as well as any of that nonverbal feedback uh, for reactions here and anyone raising their hands. So that's gonna always run in the background. And what we do is we prioritize it to let you know who is the least participative um, first. So right now I know Jonathan here, he's, the, he's kind of the laggard, the one that's kind of just is not participating. Um, hasn't really offered much up to the conversation and has just kind of been, been hanging out there. So this whole top row is going to be that. So, so really what we can do here is find ways that at least we know who are those that are not engaging, what can we do to bring them back into the conversation. Um, and so what we'll also have is the indicators of those that are the most participative highlighted here in green. So we really try to make it easy to give you a low, uh, low, mid, high scale here of red, yellow, green to I quickly identify the participation of everybody in the room. And let's see here. So Emma, I just want to take a quick break here because I've, I've hammered a lot of features here and I just want to open up to see if there's any, um, any questions that came via chat that we might want to address here before we move on. Yeah, I think one great question that came up was talking about how um, this platform um, can help us in a hybrid class. So if there's any digging yeah. in you want to do there. Yeah, that's 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 certainly going to be one of the uh, one of the hot topics, right? Everyone's kind of figuring that shift out. I think in all the research we've seen in the next six months, it's I think the market itself is going to try to figure out what's best. But I think what what we get to do is we get to partner with Zoom themselves and, and kind of how they're addressing and because we leverage their, their technology with their software development kit, that we get to reap a lot of benefits of that as things continue to evolve. But a couple of things that we're doing, one, uh, you get to um, be able to have the class camera for those that are gathered in that physical space to be present and to be able to kind of participate within, within the whole class view. Uh, that's, that's one. Uh, additionally, what we're doing and building out is we have um, something that's gonna be able to track attendance very seamlessly and easily uh, for, for, uh, for, for the instructors that are actually there physically presenting to those. And so for tracking that attendance, what you'll have is you'll get the benefit of everything being tracked automatically. And then for those that you, you have invited, but we, they didn't join, um, join through the digital way, they joined through the old school way of being in person. What you can do is you can actually check a box to, to quickly mark off who showed up um, to the actual session to track the attendance there. So now when it gets to the content and, and completing the content and interacting, that's gonna be um, required for, for a, a digital component for them to be able to do that with everybody else. Um, but, but you'll be able to at least have that attendance tracked supported both ways to have those options for, for those that are tracking attendance in that way. So that way it's, it's a, you'll have one record instead of trying to maintain two different systems of record for who joined in person and who was who's joined digital, you'll have that um, all in one, one place to at least make that part a bit easier for you. 
All right. Any other any other questions there, Emma? No, I think that was the main one that was, so you're good to go. Excellent. All right. So we'll dive back into the presentation here for just a, just a second here, because a couple of other things I want to share is how we um, are have a few things that we're going to have coming up very soon. Some fast follows is one. Uh, this is unique where we have built in, which is in beta right now and we're refining it, but we have the ability for instructors to have a one-way dialogue sidebar conversation with any uh, participant in, in, in class. And so the idea here is, is that if someone is stuck and they have a question, or um, if maybe someone is not verified and you want to verify who the person is and you don't want to do it publicly through the microphone or through chat, you, you, could, you could do that through enabling a quick private discussion that you can have with them. So lots of different use cases around this, uh, but the idea is like you can have a quick sidebar conversation with the rest of the class being none the wiser. So you'll have two different options. And the one we're looking at here is the out of room. So what you'll get is the option to be in room or out of room. And what does that really mean? It means that if you're in room, the instructor can have a quick video overlay conversation uh, that they initiate with, um, with a, with a uh, participant here. And then in that conversation, they can hear the audio of what's happening in the room. So they have awareness what's going on, but maybe they're comfortable what's happening in the room and you wanna have something that's more focused what you can do is you can choose the out of room. And so what that does is it'll allow you to have a real focused private one-on-one -on -one conversation without hearing the audio. It'll just be kind of um, the one-on-one -on -one can, can happen without any of those interactions and distractions. And then when you're done, you just hit end discussion and you're immediately right back into class. So what happens is it will just mute your audio and, and gray out your screen uh, for the silhouette for when you're doing out of the room. And how if it's not a big deal and it's just a light quick check-in, then you can keep it within the room and then everyone will still see your, your video screen. But just a nice quick way to have a quick one-on-one -on -one sidebar dialogue with anyone in your live class session. Another uh, view that we have coming up here that's gonna be very new that we have in beta right now and we're putting some refinements on, is the ability to do collaboration view. And so what this means is that you can have the video screen of select individuals that will be uh, there to be able to have their video screen uh, displayed. And then to the right of that would be their actual computer screen. So it's kind of like sharing a screen where you can walk people through kind of where you're at in the progress of something that you're working on. So it's, it's basically like group screen sharing. So the idea here is that you can have a whole room full of, of people as an instructor, and you could go through every, everything to kind of determine where everyone's at the process of whatever the digital uh, solution or software is that you're working on together. So, um, so that's kind of the, the idea is that the instructor, if there's something where there's something live and happening, um, maybe you're trying to train on, on Excel, which is always a difficult thing to train on, to know where everybody's at in the steps and process, and you want to know where they're at and, and kind of are they doing it right or not doing it right. Well, with this way, you could, you could leverage that as well as others could share that with each other as well, too. So just two new views that we're pretty excited about. And the other thing uh, that we're seeing with this and hearing from everyone is for those that are organizations that provide um, external training to their client customers for customer onboarding. This is going to be a big, um, a big component as well to be able to kind of walk them through, especially if you have software or processes that you want to share with them. This is something where you could see in a group environment very quickly and easily for customer onboarding, uh, kind of where they're at in the progress of, of moving through, through, um, through those walkthroughs that you're training them on. Just want to call those new things out as we're pretty excited about those. And so now we're going to talk through a couple of options here in scalable and accessible content. So a couple of things that around this is we, what we wanted to do in, in how we designed classes, we wanted to make it so that one, everyone gets the ability to work with this and that you can do it at grand scale and the, act, and the interactivity is going to be there. And so we're going to kind of go through a lot of the content um, options right now. And Emma, just before I do that, it looks like another Q&A came through. Is that... Yeah. Uh, we have a couple of good ones. Um, one okay. of the we've, we've two actually. So um, one from Melanie was: Is it possible for to turn off focus tracking? Um, and it is. Well, we will be able to turn off focus tracking if that's something that you um, and your organization are not interested in. 
Um, the second from Sherman um, is definitely one I'm going to toss to you, Chris. So um, what is the ideal class size for high engagement? Is there a break point where engagement typically drops dramatically? Oh, boy. Yeah, that's a, <laughs> well, that's a loaded question. Um, it, it's kind of like a it, it depends on the content. And so I think it depends on on what on whatever it is you're training on. The things that I will share is that what we're what we're hearing from our clients today is that they are feeling way more comfortable increasing their class size uh, because they have these tools and metrics to be able to kind of understand the engagement levels. Um, also, we have, we're, which we're definitely going to show, is our enhanced breakout rooms as well. And so that also gives you um, um, more insights around uh, around kind of the, the room itself and, and the interactivity and engagement levels there. And so it really kind of depends. I mean, it, it's that's a really tough one to gauge because it all it all depends. But what I will say is that for, for in the virtual space is we're seeing and hearing from our clients that they're increasing the class size because they're feeling that the engagement is still happening there and they have the data metrics to prove it. So um, one of the other new features that we're going to be having, I'm stealing a little bit of thunder at the end of this, is that we have uh, surveys and evaluations that can be done. And so in, in what we're hearing from um, everyone's kind of feedback is that is that they're they're able to interact more and they're feeling more engaged because the data and metrics are going to support that and kind of highlight that. And so when we get to the data component of it, we'll kind of walk through a little bit some of those metrics that we're seeing and hearing from everyone and how they're leveraging it to determine the exact class size because it's kind of a it's a moving target and 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 kind of depends on the on the content and and uh, and what the subject matter is. Awesome. And then I'm going to give you one more around features. Um, so Zoom has closed captioning and will be soon and this will soon be auto translate. Will this function be available in class as well? You betcha. So um, I almost debated on putting on our, our test environment here, but I thought I'd better play it safe. And, and so we'll have down here at the bottom, we'll have a live, um, live transcription and closed captioning down here at the bottom. And so we're really happy and pleased with the progress of that and, and the dynamic text and, and everything that's gonna be uh, incorporating along with that. So, so you bet we're definitely gonna have that, that's like right on the cusp, like a, probably days away from that being launched. Uh, because that's we know it's critical and important because uh, we're also providing this not only for organizations but also for um, for school systems because we support K through 12 higher ed and in the corporate environment and so it's it's really important that we uh, provide that for all those different verticals so that is definitely a, a high feature that that's um, just stays away. Great. All right. Ready to back to back to the show. Yep. Awesome. All right. Thanks. Okay. So uh, focusing on accessibility and, and content here. So one of the things that we wanted to share is that uh, or provide is the experience to be able to interact with the content and do it in such a way that you're not being taken out. And so what we provide is the digitally is we provide the way to share the content and I have to minimize it just so I can get to the get the zoom toolbar out of the way for me here as I present is we have tabbed content up here at the top. And so these are the different options for content that you can share. So maybe you have an agenda, which walks everyone through kind of what you're gonna be outlining for what you're gonna cover. And so that's what this would look like here. And so this is gonna be going through the objectives and agenda, so it has a clear understanding and you can have that launched and preset. So that way, when they join your session, everyone can see this because as the instructor launches, as we call it, the content, it, we, the learners and participants are empowered to interact with that however they see fit. And the instructor has the um, controls to push that and take it away um, you know, uh, on demand, when, however they like. Um, the ability to do assignments. So if you have a task-based assignment that you want them to complete, where it's not necessarily a knowledge check question or quiz question, you can simply launch that and either import something that's new or create a new one on the fly, and then you can just go ahead and click launch once you get that ready to go. The idea here for as you push this out for everybody is that you can do this on the fly. And so as you get to you know doing quizzes, quiz questions, knowledge check questions and tests and polling, 
the nice thing about this is that it we leveraged a different open source code uh, of Moodle, which is really um, popular and leveraged heavily within within uh, the ed tech space. So it's got really robust functionality. Um, a lot of corporate environments even like have their own LMSs operating off of that tech, like from soup to nuts for their LMS. And so it's widely used, very robust. And so we got lots of options to do that. And so with us kind of, again, combining the web conference tools and bringing the best of, of, of both worlds, being able to have this live interaction, you can create things on the fly. So if you wanted to do a poll of like, hey, we're going to tackle communication today. What are the three areas that you need help with? Let's take a quick poll on that. And so you can do that on the fly. It's just a simple matter of clicking here, create new, and then you can go ahead and, and, and put your information. Very clean, simple experience. Uh, and so we'll actually get into like, you know, maybe, hey, Chris, you're, you're, we, like, um, we like to use our poll thing that we already have everything kind of set up in. Uh, we do have the option to import uh, any questions that you might have through the import feature here, um, or you can create the new ones. And, you know, you'll, in, for a quiz questions, you'll actually have up to 12 different uh, format options to create. So if I just do test and push here to go to questions and add a new one. You'll see these are all the options that you can do to create. So you can create a really quick true and false or multiple choice, um, however you want to do that, or you can kind of collect feedback by doing an essay or short answer to just kind of hear back from everybody. So lots of fun use cases and how you want to leverage the, the questioning tool. But again, the main differentiator for us with this, with this uh, coding is that you're able to do that on the fly. You're not limited to doing it before the meeting and then launching it. You can do it in the flow of conversation of the of the of how the the training session is going and so uh additionally here we have the learning management system option here and so what we've done for this is that you can go ahead and launch that so you'll pick the learning system that you want to select we can uh connect to multiple ones but we actually connect to watch this and so what we can do is we can actually um integrate with multiple learning systems here that you can choose from it's all in our lms settings where you can kind of select which ones you wanna choose with and we tether right into whatever those tools are. And so adding multiple ones that you can choose from a dropdown or kind of swap out. And so the whole idea is that you can reference any of your asynchronous content uh, for something that you just wanna bring in that's very short and sweet. Uh, maybe it's like a quick video or a quick course. Maybe you have a quiz built in there and you want the quiz to be done there. So that way the data is living in there versus in class. And so that's fine, you can totally do that. So the, the, the way that we do this to make it easy is one, we tap into your learning system so it's integrated and we can work with LTI integrations and that's geek speak for learning tools and operability. And the idea is that you can syncopate information like registrations and, and things like that. And so the, 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 the attendance and tracking, all that's gonna be there as well as uh, tapping into your SSO capabilities. So for those that are single sign-on enabled, uh, you don't have to worry about them uh, credentialing in and authenticating with their uh, username and passwords because we'll know who they are tapped into class um, that it'll just be a seamless transition. So we, as they complete and, and, and inter interact with everything, we don't need to go through the hassle of them doing a, an additional login to be able to get in and complete the, the learning content. So a couple of fun things there. Um, and so, so we just want to bring in all those kind of different learning systems and, and kind of on that note for polling as well, that's a, another thing where we hear a lot like Kahoot and Poll Everywhere, those other options. You can actually even bring those in if that's your, your choice. So we really make it so that you can connect with the tools you're already using versus um, you having to recreate everything. And, and it can all literally live within class because as you noticed um, while I'm sharing this is that all of those tabs are up here. So I'm able to interact and access all that content all while still being in class. So I'm not clicking a link in chat to be taken out somewhere um, where that would trigger the focus tracker, right? So that's kind of the idea is that everyone would be in here. And if they're not in there, uh, they're, you know, you'll probably want to wonder why, because you are uh, you made it so that they can access all the content within here. Some of the additional fun things that we have for content is whiteboard. So we have a native whiteboard tool that we have built in here. Um, and so, but again, depending on, on the tools you want to use, Let's say you want to use browse the web. This is almost uh, like it, it's it, the naming of this kind of makes it seem a little bit limited for what it's capable of, because 
as we're experiencing this with class and as the market's working with it, is that Browse the Web allows you to bring in any tool that's browser-based that you're using today, literally anything. So it could be something where like you're working with, like on that topic of whiteboards, maybe you have a preference to leverage Miro. And so you can bring in something like that or Mural, whatever it is. And the fun thing about this is that everyone is engaging and interacting with this in real time. So they can move around and they can adjust the, the, the content and they can contribute with their post-it notes that they want to add in there. And everyone gets to see it in real time together in unison. So lots of fun things for around that. Um, we have other ways to do it. And because again, it's like not just that, anything that you wanna reference, uh, could be something like a short, a short little video that you want to play out for everyone to kind of see. Like it's very simple to one share the video and show the interactions because right now we're looking at my personal Instagram account and watching um, a quick video here to add some levity here around kind of how we train employees. And so the fun thing about this is like, again, this is how interactive it is. Is I can just go and like that while being in class as I'm watching this together with everybody else. So. We also have the ability, again, to think of other things that we want to launch. And so I really think that there's a lot around coaching where you could bring in, say, Salesforce, where you want to look at the data and metrics together, and you can kind of review that. We also have the ability to play around with project management tools. So lots of different unique uh, use cases around this, because again, everyone gets to interact with everything in real time and move things around. So just kind of want to share kind of the ability of of everyone be able to contribute to things in unison together. Um, playing videos, one thing to call out very quickly on this is that we have the ability to launch videos and not just for everyone to kind of watch and display um, together synchronized, but the students can actually control the playbacks. If I click on this, the participants now have the ability to uh, go forward and backwards and rewatch anything without losing, um, without missing out because you're not having, um, you know, beholden to making sure everyone watching it uh, together in unison. Again, they can empower it and watch it and then go complete the quiz questions or then go to the breakout room or then go on to, um, to the other projects that you're kind of sharing with them. So that's kind of the idea is that everyone gets to interact with everything uh, together in unison and leverage anything that's browser-based in the digital environment. Um, Emma, I just want to pause because I went through a lot of the features around content and see if there's any, any questions that might've come through. We have not had any additional questions. We can Excellent. keep moving. Perfect. All right. So one thing I want to share is the our breakout rooms. So this is something that's a big differentiator for us as well. And so as I click on the breakout room option, we're going to kind of see uh, a, a, a little bit of environment here. It kind of jumps right to it. But usually what you would get is the ability to uh, select you know, how many rooms you want and then the ability to manually assign or automatically assign. So those are gonna be your two options before you get to this point. Uh, but this is gonna bring up a pre-populated kind of demo environment here for us. But the things that you'll notice is that you, you would have to, the ability to physically see or visually see who is actually in what breakout room. And so you would see live in, in action kind of what's happening there. So you would have be, the, the videos would be live um, of everyone kind of as they're interacting and, and collaborating together anyone sharing their screen, that would be displayed for you to kind of see what they're doing, what they're working on, any files that they're working on, uh, you'd be able to see that because as I was kind of referencing all that tabbed content and the ways that you can share that within the teaching tools, you can actually push that specific to those in the breakout rooms. Because the number one problem you have is, all right, everyone, we're gonna kind of break up into these groups, breakout room one, you're gonna do this, breakout room two, you're gonna work on that question, breakout room three, you're gonna work on this puzzle. And so as you break out those different things, as soon as they go into their breakout rooms, they're like, wait, what are we doing? Wait, I didn't click the link in chat. Does anyone have the document? And now you're kind of out of the main room. And so you don't have a direct line of communication very easily to connect with the instructor. So, so we got a couple of things where we solve for that. One, the instructor can join at whim any of the breakout rooms that they've created, and you can open a chat dialogue direct with those um, in the breakout room. And the ability, again, to push content isolated to that specific um, breakout room. And as you see here in the chats, the breakout rooms are already created for me to tap and click on to message anyone within that breakout room. So real quick, seamless way to kind of interact and engage and, and kind of act as a lifeline for anyone that gets stuck while they're in their, in their breakout rooms. All right, I think I saw a Q&A come through. And Emma, is there anything around that that I should address? 
I just answered it. We're all good. Excellent. Thank you so much. All right. We're getting close to time here. So I want to also just add, mention around the accessibility, a couple of things. Um, we've got the ability to do something in iPad, but one of the things that we often hear around content and the ability to have awareness of what's happening in the room is if when you are speaking to something like, imagine that this PDF is a PowerPoint. And so, and I'm presenting to this and I'm communicating to that. So I want, I want to be focused on this, but I want to know what's going on in the room. Uh, but I also want everyone to see me still up here and I want to see the chats as they come through. But now I can only see a few people with front of room. How can I get a better view of what's going on in the class? Well, we created a float view where you can take that and create an extra window of everyone in the class. And you'd be limited to have, you're required to have a second monitor, but you could take this and put it off to the right hand side. And you could see everyone with their participation levels. Uh, listed out for you, um, separated low, medium, high, and you could communicate to what you're presenting on all in real time simultaneously, while everyone still gets to see you and you can see the incoming chats coming through in real time that you could address. So lots of options. So this is another thing where we're hearing is that um, this is requiring less producers or less involvement of a producer for those uh, that are facilitating by having all these additional tools with them. So I want to break it up into the next uh, chunk and segment here. Oh, actually, I'm sorry. I wanted to show also as well, just to demonstrate that we are uh, mobile enabled here. I'm going to switch over to my iPad. And I'm going to share and show you how we are doing that today. So I'm going to see if I can take over the right, start a broadcast. All right, looks like you should be able to see that today. So we'll stop screen sharing. Yes. There we go. Class, launch a demo. And we're actually going to see it as a student environment because this just probably marked me as unverified on the other side because we have two competing profiles going into our, into our demo environment. But you'll see that uh, the experience is replicated to be almost exactly the same for, uh, for class. And so on, on the iPad. So, which is not a small feat when you have something that goes from, you know, literally less than half the screen size for everyone's used to. But you'll see here that we have lots of customizable views. So we could go ahead and enlarge things to be able to see kind of everyone in the classroom. And then we still have the ability to get access all the content by clicking on the drop down menu. So instead of tabs, you can just go and click on, on the options there under that classroom tab. And even the instructor or facilitator is always pinned. And so now you've got the ability to just kind of move them around if you're viewing something and they're kind of getting in the way. So just kind of want to highlight that and how that works on the, on the iPad environment to show that we are mobile enabled on that as well. And so I'll stop my screen share and I'll go back to my desktop here. Great. All right, and so now we're just going to wrap it up with our last section here, just to kind of call out the different data and analytics that we have. And so with that, we've got a couple of few things that we want to highlight is that we've got the ability to uh, show completion of tracking of any of those assignments that you have. Uh, so anything task based, all those now check quiz questions, all that's going to be collected right here in this grade book. And so that's going to have all the results of everything that's been pushed out and all the grading and scoring automatically tracked there. We have the class roster of anyone that's been invited is going to be right here located for the instructor to click on, as well as the attendance for those that show, didn't show, and were they on time, were they, were they, were they tardy, you'll be able to have all that at, at, uh, at an easy glance reporting right there. And then the dashboard as well too. And the dashboard is going to give you aggregate information of the total um, total uh, uh, totality of the aggregate information of the class session. And if you have multiple class sessions, it'll break it down with the drop down menu for when that took place that you could click on to allow you to see all that information. We even have it down to the student level for information as well. So here's a little bit of a, a quick uh, a display here of what a grade book would look like for you to see the scoring of the different elements that were comprised of your class session to be able to see the progress and what the scoring was like for everybody. And so just to actually circle back to this, to the reference of a question earlier around hybrid, one of the things that we're hearing a lot uh, for, the, uh, for, the, the, for our clients is that they are really paying attention to the instructor talk time 
to the student talk time. And this is going to be a big indicator, kind of um, basically measuring that for how much is the instructor kind of lecturing versus the students talking and engaging and being involved in, in, in interacting uh, to, to really make sure that that's working. That actually becomes a big driver for everyone to kind of understand what the engagement levels are, are for, for that. But we also provide, and I'll actually pull this up in class environment here. Let me close this. We actually provide the ability to, oh, I got moved to, to being unverified. I'm going to end this and jump back in. We're going to provide you a color coding system that you would see um, that you saw uh, kind of for the participation levels. You get a report of that as well. And that's going to be not just for the um, for the participation, but also for that focus tracker as well. Those are actually measured separately because there could be a good reason for why they, um, why someone is not in class potentially, maybe they're taking notes or something like that. So, so the idea here is that you have both records there for you to see, but they're gonna be separated. So as you can see here, we've got the ability to do that drop down menu. And then we have the ability to download all this information to a CSV format where you can either put into Excel or with our APIs coming out to be able to connect um, uh, to your business intelligence tools like Tableau and Power BI. But we also have the student level detail for you to see all of the interactions that would have taken place as well as that color coded system uh, for, for the participation and for, for the focus tracking here. So here we go. So here we go. We've got all the individuals tracked that are listed here who were uh, showed up, who was late, who was on time, who was absent, and then the color-coded scale for those that participated, not only for the individual class session that I have that I'm displaying here, but also a running count for any series that you might have that might be an ongoing class session where it'll have a running total. All right, and so those are a couple areas that we want to target here for the data and analytics, and now we're getting to the last two minutes. And so I just want to kind of call out and give a little bit of teaser of some of the last remaining features that we're going to have coming up here uh, very soon. So, so we've got templatized courses that are going to be coming out soon. What is in what exactly is that? Well, all that content that we went through that you could upload and share with the class, we're going to make it so that you can have a master template for you to take and recreate, where you could have uh, your facilitators and instructors personalize those for how they want. Um, API endpoints. So we've we've only been around for uh, just under a year. Uh, our first available product uh, was on the Mac system in March of this year. And so we're just constantly building and creating new things. So we're going to have loads of endpoints that we're focusing on for Q4 to be able to move and connect to your different tools like LMS, LXPs, uh, HRISs. And so ha having the ability to kind of move that data amongst your different systems is going to be uh, coming out very soon with lots of options. Uh, evaluations and surveys for you to get feedback is going to be native and integrated within class for you. Uh, our native whiteboard as well. So again, that is um, we're we're just putting the finishing touches on that with a lot of capabilities to balance the intuitiveness of design as well as for the user experience. And then closed captioning and live script live transcripts, which is what uh, we had a question earlier on. So. So those are some of the quick hit features that are going to become like very soon, days away, not far off, uh, that we're really excited to unveil before the end of the year. So with that, I think we're right at the end of the time, but I just want to check in for any last minute burning questions, um, Emma. We are looking all good. We've hit all of them. Awesome. Well, I'll take it. Well, I just want to thank you, everyone, for your time. And I've, I've enjoyed this a lot. We welcome all of your feedback. So we look forward to kind of hearing, um, hearing your thoughts and, and opinions on this. And I'll turn it over to you, Emma, to close this out. Awesome. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, again, we will send over this recording and slides. Um, and if you have any other questions, um, we'll try to answer them within the chat or answer your questions in the chat via email. So thank you and have a great rest of your Thursday. Bye.